Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Real Moms Making Real Money at Home in Their Pajamas and How You Can Too. I'm here with Laura Whitman, and Laura is the blogger mastermind behind the I'm an Organizing Junkie website and the founder of Menu Planning Monday, which everyone knows about. And um, actually, Laura, you drive an awful lot of traffic to my carpot site, and I appreciate that every time um, you link to me. It is Fantastic, and I um, I have definitely learned an awful lot about menu planning through reading your posts and your reader posts, so thank you very much. Laura also has a brand new book called Clutter Rehab, which um, I look forward to getting. I ordered it this morning on Amazon, and I got an email saying it's on the way, so thank you, Laura. <laughs> so um, I, I'd love for you to just share your, you're a busy mom of three, and um, and how you turned um, kind of your hobby into now a, a real job. <laughs> um, well, I started my blog uh, five years ago now. Actually, I I totally missed my anniversary date, which was May. Oh, um, happy anniversary! Oh, thank you. And I still can't believe it's been five years that I've been doing this. I had no idea I was as addicted to organizing as I really am because. I thought I'd run out of things a long time ago to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and here I still am talking about organizing. So um, obviously it's a topic that I'm really super passionate about. And I think that helps a lot. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just it just sort of grew slowly over time. It wasn't um, anything that was, a, was an overnight thing of any kind, right? It right. Was just really slowly over time. And I'm very careful with um, the hours I put into it. Uh, hey, because do I you do, have, it. do you hear a weird like growling noise? Oh, you know what? That's coming from my house because oh. <laughs> there's somebody weed whacking in the backyard. <laughs> it's coming across like like a snarly pit bull under the table. So I'm glad to know that it's a gardener. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna close the door. Hold on. Okay. And, no, no, no. Hey, girls, and then my girls are in the kitchen, and they're making an awful lot of noise. Um, so uh, the the giggling is my nine- and six-year-old, so who – it's, it's the first week of summer vacation, so there you go. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, so when you started your blog, um, was it to interact with – the internet community was it to share with family and friends? Did you think that it would take off the way that it has? Five five years is a long time to blog. It, um, I did a little bit of research, and it seems that most people give up blogging after three months. Um, so to stick with something for five years, uh, give yourself a pat on the back. That's a big deal. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, it's been. It's been an interesting journey, and I think I haven't petered out so much in the fact that I've just um, maintained that slow growth. I think if I was going down call right from the beginning, um, I, I wouldn't have known, you know, I wouldn't have been able to sustain that kind of level of craziness. So uh, I think just building it slowly. And, yeah, when I started out, no way did I think <laughs> that um, – it was going to get to where it was at. When I started, my youngest was only um, six months, right? Oh, and, right. Yeah. And so it was just one of those things where there's there's quite a gap between um, age gap between my two sets of kids. Two sets, no, my <laughs> two <laughs> and my youngest. There's um, right six, eight, six and eight years difference between them. Right. And the older two were in school, so I was at home with this little baby, and I was used to working full time and being busy, and so. I just kind of found um, I had some time on my hands and kind of craving that adult interaction. So that's how it started. And then I just found that the posts that were centered around organizing were always the most popular. And so mm -hmm. I just kept going with it and, and just sort of blogging about what I was doing around my house, um, things that I was organizing here. And, yeah, it just kind of kept going from there. Right. <laughs> Right. If you um, were to offer advice for someone um, just starting out, um, I know that um, that that you and I um, have, have done some research on um, SEO, which is search engine optimization and that type of thing, and the fact that you have a, a tightly focused niche 
of organization. Do you find that that helps um, to, to kind of keep you centered and, and pointed towards a goal? Um, do you find that it's therapeutic to just kind of write whatever you'd like? Or, or how would you recommend um, getting started to someone who um, is kind of new to this blogging thing? <laughs> right. Um, well, let's see. That's kind of a loaded question. It is a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, <laughs> it, Nothing like putting you on the spot. Hi. <laughs> probably my, my best piece of advice when just starting out is to be yourself. Don't yes. try to copy anyone. Right. And I think that it's good to have a mentor or somebody or a blog that you uh, look up to, but don't copy them. Right. right. Like, just be yourself because often typically will last the, the length of time, right? I mean, nobody can can become, they might try to copy you, but they can be you, right? right? And I think that um, your personality is what keeps people coming back, right? Because they, if you're genuine to who you are, right? people know, know they know that. They can speak through that, right? And <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm also still giggling at your weed whacking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you know, and, and that's actually something that I've always really appreciated you. You are the same person on the internet as you are at home and how you are to your friends and your family. You're not putting on a show. Um, there are times when your house kind of is a mess. And, and you do want to, to quickly get it organized or, or cleaned up. And you're not pretending to be something you're not. Um, I always kind of use the, the line, this is real life, not a magazine article. Um, and, and you really do have kids. You're not just bringing them in for the show. So. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's exactly it. My house isn't perfect, and nor do I think anybody else should be. Because if it is, right. then are you really living? Are you right. <laughs> Right. Are you really having any kind of life if you can't ever put a coffee cup down and you know, or whatever, right. <laughs> or have papers piled up? Like if you saw my bedroom, I folded laundry uh, yesterday morning and still piled on my right. floor. I haven't put it away yet. <laughs> right. And and you know that's the kind of stuff that I appreciate as a reader, and I'm sure your readers greatly appreciate it. Um, I, I think sometimes that maybe like the, the, the home and garden TV and those type of shows and, and even for me as a food blogger, the food TV, it, it makes you feel that um, if your house isn't picture perfect or uh, your meal isn't um, perfectly styled, it's not worth doing. And it kind of sets people up, especially moms, for failure. Yeah, it really does. If you're always trying to aspire to the next thing, and it's so easy in Blogland um, mm -hmm. when when reading posts. I mean, I follow over 300 blogs on Google Google Reader um, yeah. just for research and stuff, right? Because I do a link to post, and I um, I like to link to to various posts. But but one thing I noticed that's so easy to happen is. Um, that feeling of just, oh, I can't, I can't do those things. You know, I, what's wrong with me? Why, why am I not able to, you know, have the perfectly decorated home or, or what have you? So I think we do have to be careful with the expectations we set for ourselves and not setting them so high. I mean, if, if you, just depending on the season of life you're in, if you've got young kids, look, 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 I mean, just, you're going right. to have to, you know, lower the right. expectations a little bit. Absolutely, right. and then um, you, you and I, uh, uh, since we have kind of youngish kids also, there's a big difference between when your children are out of the house school age and when you're pregnant or when um, they're in the first year of life. It, um, you can't sometimes get the laundry done every single day and, and all those things, but that's okay. If you've got a system in place, you, you know what needs to happen, and then at, at, you try again the next day. Every day is a, is a brand new day. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your expectations. I love the post that you did back in February of um, uh, the ability to say no. Uh, it's kind of an art form, and you've perfected it. How has, uh, how has that been in your life? Well, that's interesting because it's um, something I've really been putting into use in the last couple of weeks, especially I've been bombarded with requests 
to do things both online and and um, offline. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I've just really had to um, think through each one and about you know where to fit in with my priorities right now. And right now, my priority is my children. And and um, so I just really have to evaluate everything because. The opportunities that are coming to me, the requests that are coming to me, aren't always bad. Sometimes they're like exciting, right. and you want right. to do this, and you want to say yes, but um, those ones are particularly hard to say no to, right? But you, right. Really, you really have to know that, yes, those things are coming at you now, but then, like, you know, there's always another time and more opportunities later, and it's not like, you know, the world can come to an end if you... If you um, mm -hmm do say no to a particular, you know, right. opportunity. But now, yeah, when, when you, well, I'm sorry, I, I wondered about, I mean, the, the big deal with moms, of course, is the guilt. You say no to the PTA or you say no to the church, then you have guilt. So how does that come in play? How do you handle guilt? Yeah, that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, because everybody's looking for volunteers. You know, I've got, you know, yeah, the parent group um, hitting me up. I've got church hitting me up, you know. Mm -hmm. every, and because I work from home, and I, I don't know if you get this as well, uh, I think sometimes people think that you've got nothing but time. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, <laughs> so that gets hard. And um, I think knowing I'm doing it for the right reasons, and um, because I'm, uh, I'm a Christian, I do pray about um, the opportunities that come to me, right. and I just have to, I just have to know that what I'm um, saying yes to is is um, something I'm feeling that you know I feel God is leading me to to say yes to, and the others I just have to to let it go, um, right, and and not carry that burden because I think that's where as women we get overwhelmed if we're just right. carrying around you know right. the, the guilt, the overwhelm overwhelming feelings that are hitting us from so many directions. I think we just have to make a decision and then just let it go. Don't beat ourselves up about it anymore. And it's, I think it just comes with practice. Right. right. You know, I, 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 great, I definitely agree with what you say, and I appreciate you for, um, for putting that both in writing and, um, and now in this interview. Um, you're, you have a family of five, and I, and I do as well, but your core family of five, what's right for you as a family is, is, has to be the most important thing right now. And then eventually they're all going to leave. Um, and I'm probably going to have a little meltdown, um, but there will be so much time to volunteer and, and to help and to garden and to learn how to grow vegetables and, and all of the things that are on the list. But, but right now, if, if the kids need help doing their homework or, or getting the reading done, um, that has got to come first. And, um, I always kind of, uh, joke with my friends that, uh, I'm like a backwards feminist in that, um, I, I am not opposed to working outside of the home at all. But for right now, for our particular family, it's best to have right. me home. It, it works the best. Um, uh, there are times when Adam doesn't get home until late, and I'm not going to make it seem like we're this Norman Rockwell perfect family and we all sit down at 6 p.m. and we say our prayers and blah, blah, blah. I, that's not real. <laughs> um, uh, but but the ideal is there, and, and I'm okay with modeling that ideal um, for the children as, as much as I can here and there. Well, and I think it's just paying attention to um, that internal struggle and dialogue that goes on in, inside each of us. And mm -hmm. I know if I said yes to something and it's not aligning with my priorities I and, I, and I'm resentful because of yeah. it, I am just a nasty person to be around. Like, <laughs> yelling at the kids or, or what right. have you, you know, and I don't want that, so no. I, I'm really very careful about what I say yes or no to right from the start, because I know what I, I know what happens to me. Right. <laughs> right. And, right, and you, and you certainly wouldn't advise your readers to, to be something that you yourself are not, um, so, yeah, yeah. And you, so you do a great job. 
Oh, you I do think. Think. <laughs> yeah, it will look different for everybody. So things that I'm saying yes to, you know, might nece- might not necessarily be what the next person is saying yes right. to. Just, I think, you know, we just have to stop comparing ourselves to everybody and just go at our own pace what's right for our family, our own family. Right. Right. Now tell me a little bit about how Clutter Rehab came to be. I know that you wrote that you weren't necessarily looking um, for a book, but you were contacted, and that must have been an exciting day in your house. Well, scary, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't call myself a writer. It's the strangest thing, right? I I blog, I've blogged for five years, but what I, how I describe it is I post pictures and and write around them. (laughs) Oh, interesting. So you consider yourself um, m- more of a definitely visual. You're you're not thinking about writing all day long. Because I find myself writing constantly in my head, and um, so it's good to hear and, a and different that, perspective. And that's the difference I think between mm-hmm. uh, writers and non-writers like myself. I unlike a lot of bloggers out there that I know, they've got their whole get scheduled on an editorial calendar for weeks right. on end. At, I always only ever write my blog post the night before. You oh, know, interesting. I don't have anything lined up. Even you know, even after five years, it, it's just the way I work best. The, um, I don't, as of the day before, I have no clue what I'm going to be writing about. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll have a, uh, you know, things scheduled, like a guest scheduled or something. But right. for myself, I'm, I'm always... Uh, you know, just playing by the seat of my pants. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> but, uh, but with color rehab, so when they contacted me, I thought to myself, like, have they read my book? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the queen of the little L and the little happy face. Right. <laughs> oh, I know. I get emails from people saying, you know, you really shouldn't write LOL. It just shows how immature you are. And I'm like, dude. This is me. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously. And sometimes I'm, I haven't figured out how to convey that through video yet. Like, I find my videos are way too serious. That's so not me, but I'm just, I'm camera shy or something. I don't know what happens. You, you do a great job. So I'm working on that. I'm sure I'll get into my groove at some point. But um, So after talking with the publisher of Clutter Rehab for a little bit back and forth, um, they, because I said no, I said, like, listen, this is, is not for me, this is a big commitment, I don't really have the time to fit it into my schedule, and that's another example of um, a great opportunity that I had to say no to, and I, I felt quite um, confident about my decision, but they really pursued me, and then they came back and said, well, how about we just do a tip book, and I knew that would be a little bit easier to write, although it's really was. <laughs> only because on my blog I write very conversationally. Right. And that doesn't, you know, you can't really do that so much in a, in a book because um, I don't have, I don't necessarily have that rapport built up with a reader maybe picking up my book and never having had read my blog. So right. So a, a little different. So anyway, when they, um, when they did that, I reevaluated and I thought, okay, okay. I might be able to do it. <laughs> and uh, it was a quick turnaround. I think by the time we decided this, it was March, and I had to have it in by uh, the end of August. Oh, so wow. I'll be perfectly honest with you, Sierra. The only way I was able to get this done is I actually sent my kids to uh, my parents for a month, the month of July. Because not only was I writing a book, um, during that month I had to pack up my entire house to move wow. to another province. Right. It was a crazy month. So, right. Yeah, I'm not we, sure. we should also probably share that your children are, are not in the nursing stage or anything. They're definitely older. <laughs> yeah, they, that was the first time they flew on their own. They yeah. um, hadn't, hadn't flown before um, just themselves, but it worked out really, really great. So um, yeah. they're actually going to go for another couple of weeks this summer because it worked out so right. well. Right. <laughs> I would like that. I need to get on board with that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the baby's not ready yet, but uh, these big yeah. kids could definitely uh, go on a, a, a trip. Yeah. yeah. It'd be good for me and Adam, too. That must have been nice, actually. <laughs> well, my husband wasn't home. That oh. Nice. He already moved to another province. To wow. So I was just home by myself, and, and 
Uh, well, I thought that I would have loads of time, but it just goes so fast. There's so, it much, so much to do. So it was a very trying month. I was very happy to see the end of that month, and I'm not sure I'll, I'll do the book writing thing again. I know you've done now three times, and I'm just amazed by that, right? I don't, I don't, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, uh, in order for me to get the actual writing done, I end up um, working from midnight to 4 a.m. I do um, kind of a split shift, and I can't do it long term, obviously. It's only for a few weeks in a row crunch time um, to meet deadlines, but um, but that's how I have to do it because I can't concentrate. And then during the day, I'm constantly sidetracked by the phone ringing or Twitter tweeting or an instant message or something from email. So I know that if I'm up by myself from midnight to four with a coffee pot, I can kind of crank stuff out. But yeah, it's interesting because you you have, and I'm sure you grew up with this like like glamorous life of the writer in the woods and it's so not. <laughs> no, there was just me in my office yeah. eating popcorn because I found my brain didn't work unless my mm-hmm. mouth was moving. So... Yeah, good for, I'm glad you shared that story. I think that's great. I think that's great. Yeah. I wanted to ask you just one other thing, and it's, um, it's something that I'm struggling with right now. Um, how have you been able to integrate, um, like sponsored blog posts and, um, and compensated posts or working with brands without upsetting your readers? I, uh, I, right now have a compensated post up by Coca-Cola because I'm uh, able to go to their factory next week. And uh, I woke up this morning to about uh, maybe eight or nine hate emails. Uh, oh, yeah. Goodness. So, I mean, th- things saying that, oh, I feel bad for your kids because you're feeding them high fructose corn syrup and, and just, like, I get it. I, I get it. But at the same time, um, bills have to get paid. And so I, I just wondered how – you've dealt with that in your own life and in your writing career? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I haven't really done too much of the sponsored post thing. It, it's such a fine line, I know, um, uh, because I do have my relationship with Open Sky, which is yeah. my, my online store. So um, I, I think that as long as um, I'm sticking to um, – you know, following my integrity and in that it's um, promoting products that I only use and love myself. I think that's right. um, sort of how I make that distinction for me. Um, right. That, yeah, so I'm just really careful that way um, to, to um, uh, just promote those things that I'm using anyway in my home. I haven't, mm-hmm. I haven't really come across the sponsored posts thing like I said. So, right. Um, this, today was actually the, the first time and um, I, I kind of knew it was going to happen because uh, just the way it's worked is, is I needed to do another thing for um, for cream cheese uh, and it just so happened that they were back to back and I figured I'd piss people off and I was right. Um, <laughs> when you write, do you write um, to like a fictitious person, or or do you, do you, do you know kind of what comments you're going to get when you're writing? Can you visualize the feedback from your audience while you're writing, or do you just kind of spew it out and and yeah <laughs> yeah um well kind of a little of both <laughs> yeah um I do have a good uh, feel for for my audience um and so um. But when I'm writing, I'm always writing as if I'm sitting with my girlfriends just having yeah. a chat. So um, I think I, – I, and I'm hope, counting on people knowing my heart. So yeah. the, the readers I worry about are the ones that are just new to my blog and, and don't really know me yet. And mm-hmm. um, because I could come across, you know, one way that – that isn't intended how I intended it, just because. Right. Um, but those who have read my blog long term know that I'm just kind of a, a you know crazy, crazy kind of girl, and and um, you know I love making fun of myself. That's one of the things I love to do. But so the, the readers I do worry about are the new readers because they right. might not have that vibe for me yet, right. um, and they might and they might get offended over something. But I'm 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 so not controversial. I read a 
um, a tip post one time that said, you know, in order to grow your blog, you should you should have some kind of controversy. Oh, going I know. <laughs> so I thought, no, thank you. <laughs> I know. I've read those things too. I don't have the stomach for that. I. Well, uh, I mean, the idea of, like, comment wars and this or that, I'm like, no, no, no. And I had promised Adam, I said, I'm not going to talk about the kids or post pictures, and he was fine with that. And then he's like, and you can't talk about religion, politics, sex, or money. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, then I better just stick to the crock pot. <laughs> the crock pot, yeah, that's good. My most controversial post probably was a post I did about laundry. <laughs> oh, what happened? Well, I don't sort my laundry. I oh, I don't either. All in. <laughs> but there were a few people that were very offended by that. And I yeah. thought, okay, well, if that's my most controversial post, then that, I, that's not too bad, right? Yeah. You're, yeah, I think you're doing really well. I don't sort my laundry either, and I'm actually really surprised how many people do. It's just, I, I think because we do everything on cold and, and it. So far, maybe once in a while, or like a red soccer sock will make Adam's undershirt slightly pink. I'm like, you know what, dude? Sorry. And <laughs> vinegar, vinegar. That's my yes. <laughs> I throw vinegar in every load, and I'm, I'm serious. Okay. I just throw it all. How in much there. vinegar do you put in for a full load? A glug glug. <laughs> a glug. <laughs> okay. I, I think it's about a quarter cup or so. Okay. Um, no, that's good to know. And it doesn't make the clothes smell vinegary-ish? No, 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 not at all. No. Okay. It, it actually removes the need for um, any kind of fabric softener as well oh, because it helps with the static. So I don't use any kind of um, uh, fabric softener in the washing machine or in the dryer. Oh, um, I'm going to try that. Yeah. Okay. So it cuts down on cost too, right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, um, I know you're in Canada, so um, uh, a lot of the the travel is difficult. But have you been able to attend any um, blogging meetups or conferences, and and do you recommend them for people? Um, I think this this is also um, I don't know why this is, but um, I haven't really I haven't been invited to any sort of um, you know events where right. um, bloggers are invited to come or whatever. I haven't right. been invited to any of those, so I haven't had that um, experience. But I, And because most of the conferences like Blogger and all of those are, are in the U.S., I, I just really haven't had the opportunity. But Blitzen came to um, Toronto last yeah. year, so I did go to that okay. because my family lives really close to there, so I kind of tied the two together. Right. Um, so And that was really cool. I don't, I don't necessarily know I'd do it again. I, um, I'm really, you know, as much as um, I seem like an extrovert on my blog, I'm really just a, a homebody, <laughs> and uh, it was so nerve-wracking for me. I, I, I don't know yeah. what it is, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I would agree with you. I, um, I've only spoken at one. Um, blogging conference. I, I did a gluten-free event, and that was fantastic. Um, as of right now, um, I'm a little hesitant to spend um, like family vacation money to to travel. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I I appreciate that. It, it's interesting. Um, there's a, a, a camp of bloggers who um, really go to many, if not all, of the conferences, and um, and then there are some. Uh, who just don't go to any, and it seems as if you don't have to follow one extreme or the other, and all of the sites seem to grow organically anyhow. So um, I, I wouldn't yeah. put attending conferences as a must for any blogger. No, and I wouldn't either. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it would have grown my blog faster. Or quicker. I, I don't know. Um, but that's uh, never really been my priority. I've always said right from the beginning that I just wanted to pay my grocery bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I I still hold yeah. to that to this day. Um, yeah. And you know I haven't. There are lots of things that I could have done to to grow my blog. Um, you know, but I I just haven't. I um, um what was I gonna say? Uh, like oh I haven't written an ebook. I haven't. You know 
I'd, I'd like to. I think I have a section on my blog where I've got, I've said I've got one coming soon or something, and I'm just like, okay, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I, like I said, I'm just really careful with my time, and, you know, I think there are definitely things I could have done uh, to to grow my blog even more, you know, and I see a lot of the same people that I started, that started blogging at the same time as me, they have, and mm -hmm. so there's always that, you know, a little bit of competitiveness there, thinking, oh, well, maybe I should, I see so-and-so doing that, yeah. oh, I should probably do that, yeah. and, and so I'm constantly fighting that, and saying, no, 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 this is just um, my life, and, right. you know, my family, and I, I, I'm constantly reminding myself, whoa, 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 right? <laughs> slow down because um like you said you just you just don't get this time back it goes it, it goes so fast and and i think knowing my goal of just being able to pay my grocery bill and and you know a few extras here and there um mm -hmm. that's what, that's enough for me that it's enough for me i mean because i don't want to be um Sitting, writing constantly, that's not something I, I totally right. enjoy. I enjoy the organizing of course, right. and I love that. Right. Um, right. And I, but I don't really enjoy the writing side of it. So, um, and then I, 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 I write for one other um, site um, once a month, and I can't even begin to tell you how much that stresses me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I think I have to be so professional and, and, uh, and, it just takes me so long to write one post. I'm not even kidding you. Um. You know, life. Laura, I, I I think you are helping so many people right now with your honesty and your candidness. Thank you for, oh. for sharing that the writing part doesn't come easily and yeah. deadlines stress you out um, the same way they stress many, if not yeah. most, people out. Um, I had some freelance writing obligations and um, you're absolutely right. They turned into obligations. And yeah. while they um, paid, and uh, my husband was thankful for the paycheck, um, I needed to, to stop because I found that uh, the, the pressure weighing on me, it wasn't healthy for me and it wasn't healthy for the kids and, um, and not worth it in the long run. Yeah. 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 And we all have to evaluate that for ourselves. And, you know, others make it work by having lots of health and they have their husbands mm -hmm. healthy. I'm right, and, and you and I certainly don't begrudge anyone no, for no, having exactly, help. Right. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. I just, um, you know, my, I don't even think my husband reads my blog. I don't even think he does it. <laughs> Mine does it. He says he does, but I know he does it. Because every once in a while I'll be like, yeah, I wrote about that. <laughs> I think uh, some of the guys he works with actually read my blog because they all tell That's him funny. things about what's going on and, and you know, he has no clue what I've written, and they're going, oh, yeah, so, you know, I read about this and yeah. this on your wife's blog, and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> So, you know, oh, it's funny. very much my own thing that I've got going on here. It's not, yeah. I wouldn't really say it's a, a family thing. Um, well, of course, the organizing is. They're right. benefiting from that. Absolutely. The, the blog, I kind of just do when when there's nothing, like, when everybody else is doing something. Like, yeah. I, you know, they don't often, I don't often just make it a part of our day-to-day. -day. So if right. I'm writing after the kids are in bed or, or what have you, it's just, it's just kind of kept separate. And, when, um, you, when you meet someone for the first time and they ask what you do, what do you tell them? Do you tell them you're a mom? Do you tell them you're an author or a blogger? Or do you just say, I'm so-and-so's mom and, and leave it like that? Yeah, that it's been, that's a, that's a great question because I just moved, right, to this new community. Yeah, well, when are we? <laughs> I know. And I've been so hesitant. So when I first moved here in August, um, the, I'd written and finished writing the book, and it didn't come out until December. And mm -hmm. I was kind of excited that I moved before the book came out because I thought, I'm telling nobody that I've written a book because if it's really bomb, then nobody here knows me and I don't have to, have to worry about it. <laughs> it's doing quite well. Your book is doing very well. You should be incredibly so. proud of yourself. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, when I do meet people, I don't really tell them that I'm um, a blogger. I, I say I um, I organize, and I do mm -hmm. organize um, outside of the home for others as well. So I'll, I'll mention that, but I don't often mention the blog. I don't know why. It's just, yeah. it, 
you know, it eventually it'll come out, but not right. uh, not initially. Yeah. Right. I, I actually prefer people in my real life not to read my stuff online. I'm okay with the with the cookbooks, but for t- in in the blogging, truly, like I've just shared, I I hardly share anything personal. But it, I feel like like there's a boundary, and and yeah, no, I know, I know exactly what you mean. And you know what? If you ever want to move to California, there's a house three doors away for sale. <laughs> you can come have coffee with me. Oh, I would just love the hot weather too. Oh my! God. It's not hot today. I don't know what's going on, but yeah. Oh, you're kidding! No, we had rainstorms and all this stuff. It's it's bizarre, very bizarre. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, my We're oh, gonna wow. blame BPA and high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, all right. Well, Laura, I'm going to I'm gonna go because I can hear the baby is starting to wake up from her nap. But thank you so much for spending so much time with me and, and for sharing your ideas and your wisdom um, with uh, our, our limited web TV audience. Um, I, uh, I, I greatly appreciate everything you've done. Um, you do a great job. I love this, this interaction um, one-on-one like this, even though, you know, others <laughs> The one-on-one is, is, is where I do, you know, where I am most comfortable, I guess. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, that's, and especially when I can, like, we're on Skype right now and I can see your face and that helps, right. totally helps as well. Yeah. You, you look just like your picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really, like you said, I really am the same online as I am right. offline. It's just, right. It's all, and it's and all you fun. really do have three kids. Every once in a while, I'll get an email from someone saying, do you really have kids, or do you just say you do? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I am not that creative. <laughs> That's funny. I've, never, I've never had that question. <laughs> I'm not sure how I would respond. <laughs> I think it's because we never post, like, uh, you don't post right. pictures. I don't post pictures of my kids either, and I, I've never even shared their names. Right. I haven't, yeah. You haven't either? No. Every oh. once in a while, I get worried because in an email I will, and I realize, oh, okay, well, technically emails aren't private and blah, 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 but right. we'll see what happens. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> as as oh. long as you're not texting, like, body parts to people. I mean, I think we're <laughs> don't do that. Kids, when you're watching at home, don't ever, ever do that. Not worth it. I'm adjusting my top. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, just, we'll zip right up, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Laura, very, very much. Please check out organizedjunkie.com. I will put links. I will put a link to her book, Clutter Rehab. Um, Thank you again. I look forward to speaking with you some more in the future, and um, have a great day.